I have yet to do my hair, so that's gonna just have to wait. And just to let you know, this is the first time I'm actually in my bed to go to sleep. Filming and editing for Vlogmas, I have been downstairs in my living room, falling asleep on the recliners. Very uncomfortable, but I don't know. I just usually don't like to be on my laptop in our bedroom. I don't know for what reason. These are thoughts just off the top of my head. They are thoughts filled still with question and wonder and excitement. And I think I'll start with my strengths this year. I was going back and forth whether or not to start with my strengths or my weaknesses in these areas of my life that I think need improvement or that I think desperately needs refining. The first would be my discovery and my deep, my now deep love for historic Christian orthodoxy. And the best way that I can summarize that is basically just learning what our church fathers have been saying for the past thousands of years. Orthodox just means correct opinion. And I'm still learning this, guys, but basically the role of the church fathers, their lives and writings were what made up Christian life, the Christian life. And they were pretty decisive in matters of doctrine. Yeah, basically just learning what the church has been saying for the past thousands of years. I don't care how many Christian clips of pastors that you hear, how many new TikTok pastors come out, nothing that's being said hasn't already been said. Everything's already been said. We are just pretty much watering down the doctrines of those who have given their lives, who have given their whole beings. Augustine. I don't think Thomas Aquinas is a church father. I, guys, I'm still figuring all of this stuff out, okay? Theologians like C.S. Lewis and G.K. Chesterton. You rarely ever hear those names much in charismatic circles or church evangelical circles which is so unfortunate because these are the guys they did the hard work not taking anything away from what the church is doing today but my gosh they had depth they had breath they didn't have the stuff that we have now that's clouding our judgment that's seeping into our churches and our theology they probably had much worse circumstances than we do now Although what we have now is pretty dang, pretty dang bad. But it's just relearning. And it's learning depth. I think that's, I think that's definitely one thing that I have excelled at this year. One thing that I've developed a deep passion and a deep love for is the depth and the breadth of the beauty and wonder of religion, of theology. And I think that's part of my hope for my social media and my channel in between the vlogs and the cute hauls and all that kind of stuff. What I really, truly want to express, what I really, truly want to express is how you can view the statement of religion versus relationship and see that it's actually both and not either or. Because when I look at a verse like John 3.16, in as much as I am faithful to that verse, I must also be faithful to the following verse and verses. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him they might be saved. Of course, God loves us. Of course, he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And we live from and in relationship. But even in relationship, guys, it takes work. There are things that you just cannot do that doesn't fly in marriage. That's where religion comes in. Just like I have preferences, my husband has preferences, God has preferences. There are certain things that he likes and there are certain things that he doesn't like. It's honestly really so very simple, but we overcomplicate it. More importantly, we water it down when we only share one side of the coin and forgetting 
that there are two. And let's take it down to verse 18, shall we? Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is where I think Christians are going to become undone in the year 2023 and in the years to come. They are going to become sick and they are going to become tired. Sick and tired of watered down gospel. I think in the days to come, Christians are going to start waking up. They're going to actually start reading their Bible. They're actually going to become, and I pray that they become obsessed with the wonder and the beauty of theology and the wonder and the beauty of religion. I get excited when I hear the word religion now. I always used to shy away. I always used to cower back. I always used to get offended. I always used to say, because it is relationship essentially, but you can't have one without the other. I can't love the things of this world like how I love my husband. No, that's where I have and we have rules. <laughs> no, you only have sex with me <laughs> within the confines of our marriage. I mean, for crying out loud, you can't even look at someone with lust. It starts in the heart, right? And so this is where the beauty of religion comes in because it sets up healthy boundaries for us in our relationship with God. I'm not even talking about our relationship with each other in marriage and only marriage okay none of this boyfriend girlfriend stuff so that's one of the areas that i think i really just i got it a little bit you know i got i got the bug i got the bug for theology i got the bug for the study of the gospel and when i go without it i can feel it man i can feel it i feel it in the depths of my soul i mean i just i can't i can't go without it i can never not go without talking to the lord and part of that led me to create my daily liturgy. And this has helped me so much. I shared a little bit more about that a couple Vlogmas videos ago. So if you want to check that out, click up here. But what that's done is create such a healthy and I think will be a very sustaining prayer life for me. One that I know will carry me through every season of my life. Because every one of the chapters that I pray and that I riff and that I sing, they pretty much cover the essentials, you know? And so for me, in creating a daily liturgy, pairing with studies and teachings from Theosu, I'm gonna have a whole year to work through this thing. And I suppose my last strength for 2022, it's the revelation. <laughs> I hate to call it revelation because it sounds so intermediate and elementary school vibe, but it's been learning my place as a female, as a woman, and as a wife. So all of the female womanly things, it's almost as if it's like I've been hit and have gotten hit by a runaway train, a bullet train, and it's been such a challenge. It has challenged me to the max. It has challenged the ego egotistic, narcissistic, prideful, feminist power in me. Every bit of that is being poked at, cut away, gouged out, all the things. I mean, if we want to get really specific here, <clears throat> really learning my place as the weaker vessel. Every time I say it, it just feels topsy-turvy. Because if you know my husband, you know that he is, he's much more quiet on the softer meeker side and i and i and i and i i've been put in my place let me just say that but am i getting it right every day absolutely positively not it's actually just exhausting me thinking about it but even that i don't want it to ex it shouldn't exhaust me it's biblical it's scripture and it's been a back and forth back and forth between two individuals who i follow who have challenge me and continue to challenge me on a daily basis. Their stuff is not for the weak apart. Between the transformed wife and Gabriel Finocchio, talk about challenged, okay? And I will follow them to the day I die. <laughs> but when I read their stuff, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I may not be living that way right now. I may not be there right now, but I agree with that. Oh, I, I so desperately want to live that way. And some of their things are very, a lot of their stuff, everything of theirs is extreme. But it challenges me and that's why I keep following them. Because it just, it makes, it makes sense to me. 
and not in any weird make sense head sense kind of way you know talk about your christianity being tested to find out if you're actually really a christian <laughs> i mean they go hard they go in but it's truth it's spirit and truth i thank god for where i'm at i thank god for where he has me now for what he's brought me through and where he'll bring me i just want to be a good steward of everything in my life following the order of the house knowing that I am the weaker vessel and accepting that truth even though I don't act it even though I don't talk like it even though my character doesn't say it a lot of the times I am the weaker vessel and sometimes I'm just gonna drill that into my husband too because he's just as unfamiliar with all of this womanhood biblical womanhood as I am honestly Lord help me get it help us get it I want to fall deeper in love with the presence, with talking to God, with prayer, with fasting, with theology. I want my character to reflect my daily habits. I want my family to see me create habits in my life that bring transformation, biblical, honest, genuine transformation. And I want to be an honorable wife. I want to continue to step into the call of being the weaker vessel, the call of being lesser than, and being okay with that. I actually love that <laughs> because I've had to be the stronger vessel a lot of my life. And I grew up in a family of women who have always been the stronger vessel. They had to be. They had to be. They didn't ask to be. And I don't want to play that part anymore because I'm tired, because <laughs> I'm exhausted. And it's no wonder because it's not my place. I don't want to be a career woman anymore. I don't care to preach behind a pulpit. I don't want to. And I want my girl to know how to be a laid down lover. How to really come to love to read your Bible. I want to be the one to bring a sacrifice of praise. And teach my kids how to do that. Through my daily liturgies. Through my daily habits. Steward my life well. My body well. My home well. My parenting. My marriage well. My faithfulness to the church well. Help me, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit. And help my friends as they reflect back on your goodness this year. In Jesus' name.